But again, I'm going to choose the profile curve, shift select the path curve, tube selected. Again, I'm going to edit reset just to make sure that my settings here are their default settings and hit apply. And you might see something weird. Well, not too weird. So what we have here is the result of all of these settings. We have result position, the pivot, and the orientation. All of these settings here work together to create the resulting surface that you have. So what do we have here? Let's look at result position first. We still have at profile and at path. Same thing as with the flat style. The surface right now is at profile, so it gets moved to the profile's position. If I delete this, again extrude but use at path and apply. You see we get the result at the path position. So also at, with, I'm going to go ahead and leave this one here, also we have pivot, the closest endpoint or component. So when it says closest endpoint, it's choosing the closest endpoint of the path and using that point as the pivot of the resulting surface. And it really depends on the orientation of the path compared to the profile. If I move the profile, you'll see that my surface results are much different. Let me click the surface, and with my profile way over here, let's create a new one. Shift select that with these same settings, and apply. And you see that the result is really wacky, and not really usable for anything. If I select my uh, profile curve again and move it around, you'll see that the closer I get to the path, the more the, the resulting surface makes sense and is predictable. So I typically like to keep the profile very close to the path, if not like right on the path, because you can get some really wacky results based on what settings you have. Not that these settings couldn't work in other situations, but this is with the pivot being closest endpoint. I'm going to delete this surface. I'm going to keep my profile over here just so you can see what the difference is and what happens. Shift select my path again and choose component and hit apply. So this looks a lot nicer and what it's doing is it's using the components of the profile to create a pivot as opposed to the pivot of the closest endpoint and then using that same pivot along the entire path which gives you a much cleaner result. And I like to use the component pivot most of the time just because I think it gives you a cleaner result. So I could, but still if you move your original curves because of history the surface will change and can get pretty funky even when I move my profile closer to my path it's pretty funky just because of the original positioning of the curves is what's kind of dictating how the surface is computed. If I delete this surface now and use this new positioning and hit apply, I have my original clean surface again because it's using this new positioning to compute the results. And if I move this now, it gets wonky again as I move away. So that's with the uh, component and closest endpoint pivots. Next we have orientation, with this, which is path direction and profile normal. We've been using profile normal this whole time. If I delete this, Shift select these in the right order and choose path direction and hit apply. We're getting a very similar result, probably because my profile curve is so close to my, to my path. And we're using the component for the pivot. A lot of these results can change based on the um, combinations of options you set in here. If I move my curves away from each other and choose path direction, you see it still works pretty well. If I delete this and choose, say, closest endpoint, hit apply. It doesn't work so well. So a lot of these settings you just have to kind of play with until you get something that works for you. And what I tend to do, if I edit, reset here, back to my defaults, I'll choose my two curves and hit apply. That's the result I don't like. However, instead of deleting it and trying something else, I can go over here in the channel box, and I still have all these different uh, options over here to use, such as use component pivot. Instead of closest endpoint, I can choose component pivot, 
and you see that manipulates the result here. I can choose center of bounding box at profile and trying to find the option that works the best. You can say use profile normal on or off. That's off. That's on. You can say fixed path is off and on, which means fixed path is essentially saying if it's on, you're using the path's positioning. If it's off, you're using the profile's positioning. So a lot of the, uh, if you get some crazy shapes, you can go in here in the channel box under the extrude input here and change a lot of these settings and get the ones, get the combination of settings that work best for your situation. So I like this. This is a good, this is a good result. So let's look at some more options here. After all these settings, we have rotation and scale. And we still have these same options over here in the channel box, which I think will be easier to show you. You choose rotation, middle click and drag. You can see that I'm getting a very strange result. Because what it's doing is it's rotating the profile curve along this path to get this shape. And because my profile curve is oriented way over here, I have a very uh, unattractive looking result. If I delete this surface, I'm going to actually curve snap my profile to the path so it's literally right on it. Shift select them, surfaces extrude. I have my nice shape here. And then I'm going to go to rotation. See now it's just kind of twisting along the path. And you can, by default, this rotation, if I middle click and just drag it like a slider, goes from 0 to 360. But you can type in, say, 1200, and it will do it. So you can see it's just kind of twisting around the path using the profile profile's pivot. And then you put that back to 0. Then you have scale. It's going to scale the profile along the path, giving it like a growing or tapering look. It can be very useful for if you're creating like a tail or a horn or something along those lines. That's using scale. And again, if my profile curve was way out in the boondocks, when I create this surface, you'll get a very different result because it's using the profile's position extrude. Oh yeah, I still got those other settings. Component, let's say at path, and then scale. You can see it goes way out here and way in there. So I think it's good practice, a, a good uh, get the cleanest results by having the profile curve as close to the path as you can. It makes sense. Then, after rotation and scale, we have curve range. Again, this is a common setting amongst these uh, surfaces commands that I've talked about in the other uh, commands, other videos. But curve range, by default, is complete. And if you choose partial, it just gives you a couple of different options that you don't typically have. I'm going to choose component and app path and apply. Get my nice clean result here. So in the channel box, You'll see now, in addition to the extrude uh, command uh, options here in the channel box, you have subcurve one and two. Subcurve one being the profile curve, and subcurve two being the path curve. And so, with these subcurves, you can literally choose how much of the curve to use when extruding. So, if you wanted to use just a portion of it. You could. You can also animate this. So if you wanted to simulate something growing and running along a path, you can do it that way. And with subcurve 1, you can choose how much of the profile to use. So if you only wanted to, say, have a little trench in here instead of a whole circle, you could do that as well using that subcurve. That's with a curve range of complete. Uh, you do not you do not get the subcurves. It just extrudes it, and that's the only options you have. And then a partial curve range gives you these subcurves that you can play with. 
And then last but not least is output geometry, just like with the other settings. You have nerves, polygons, subdivisional surfaces, and bezier. I'm going to go over the polygons settings in a different video. I'll put a link over here. Their settings that they use for the polygon outputs are the same settings that they use for converting nerves to polygons, which can be found under Modify, Convert, Nerves to Polygons. If I go in the options here, you'll see those same exact settings there as you would find under Surfaces, Extrude, Options, Outputting, Polygons. Same settings. And I have a video going over all these settings. Uh, because they're common to all of these different commands, I didn't want to have to go over the same set of settings multiple times. So I've created its own video, part one and part two. So definitely take a look at those if you're interested in outputting polygons from your uh, surfaces commands. But by default we're using NERMS right now and uh, that pretty much comes to the end of our video. Uh, there's a couple of different little advanced things you can think about just like with other uh, surfaces commands you don't have to use curves you draw. If I created a NERMS sphere, of course I have a linear sphere, let me delete that one. Create NERV sphere options cubic. There we go. And then say, uh, I don't know, create a NERV cylinder. You can choose the isoparms on these different surfaces as your profile curve. If I right click and choose that isoparm, parm, excuse me, isoparm. <laughs> and then shift select that isoparm I've essentially selected a profile and the path surfaces extrude it will give me a result so you don't have to use just curves that you draw you can also use curves that are on surfaces and again you have your show manipulator when you're using uh, partial curve ranges you, if you choose the show manipulator tool when selecting these curve uh, subcurves it gives you this little handle you can use instead of using numerical inputs. So yeah, that's been the extrude command. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little bit about it that you didn't know before. Definitely like and uh, subscribe if you have any comments or suggestions, questions. If I miss something, definitely let me know. I really appreciate you guys watching and subscribing. And you guys have a wonderful day.